Hello everyone, coming to you live from New York City, it's Call My Teachers Photography. This is class number 72, and today it's all about pinhole camera photography. How is everybody? I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's March 20th already, 2022. Spring comes, I think the first day of spring is tomorrow. How wonderful is that? All right, let's get into it. This beautiful teak multi-coated lacquered camera is the zero image 6x9 second edition multi-format teak pinhole camera with an f-stop of 235. <laughs> giving you infinite depth of field from the camera to the mountains infinite depth of field all right guys let's get into it this zero image camera is handmade all teak brass fittings optional cable release shutter mechanism okay let's take this off for a second Oops. Okay, we'll pick that up. <laughs> On the top, all brass hardware. Brass film advance, okay? It's designed that it can only go one way. You can't unwind your film. This is the bolt that keeps it all together. Spirit level to keep your camera level. On the back is the exposure dial. This little two-wheel dial is dead accurate for example before i you're going to see the photos that this took very soon just stick around <laughs> i used the voyant land the vc2 light meter okay i took my exposure reading and it said for example f11 at 1 2 50th of a second so you just line up your dial f11 at 1 250th of a second and you look for your f-stop of the camera in this case it's f-235 so you get as close as you can on the dial okay and you look at how long it says and it says two seconds so you line up your camera right you get it nice and level you look you try and judge it doesn't have a viewfinder right or a uh, single lens reflex right or a range finder or anything like that so you just kind of guess where it's pointed right you take your exposure right in this case it said two seconds 1000 2000 close that's it and then you advance your film now how do you know how far to advance it in the back zero image thought of everything you just slide this back and there it has three windows three red windows right here one for each of the different formats the top window you use that frame counter window if you're shooting six by 4.5 i put all these little post-it notes on here the middle window is six by six that's what i shot this camera at for the first two rolls six by six the bottom window you use that for six by seven and six by nine formats Okay, this is the brass plate, zero image, uh, six by nine, second edition, handmade, has the serial number, right? Okay, so, oh, this tripod, by the way, is the iFootage all metal tripod that I purchased, right? We have the sponsor for this show is callmytaverna.com. Okay, you just pull this down, right? The camera lifts off. Okay, come on. Okay, so let's get this on a better angle. All right, now we'll take the top off and show you how to adjust the multi format. Okay, so first you take the top off. All teak. Teak is a type of wood that's pretty impervious to the weather, right? Multi lacquered, lacquered spray painted flat black on the inside to keep reflections down then you remove this back panel right okay 
And in the back, it exposes the multi-format layout. So your fresh film would go in here, and you bring it across, and this is your take-up spool over here. Now, it's set up right now for 6x6. Six six. If I wanted to go 6x4 six or 5, you pull out this piece of wood, and you go make it closer into the next slot. Okay? If you want to... Let's just see. Come on. There we go. And you just put it in the next slot over there. Okay? So now you have set up for 6 by 4.5. If you want to go 6 by 7 format, you just put it into this slot. And this one goes into this slot. And there you go. You see that you have all these little grooves here, right? Six, 4.5, six by six, six by seven. And the last one is just six by nine. Okay? So that's how you arrange the wooden inserts for the different formats. That's why they call it multi-format. And uh, it's all painted matte black, okay? The uh, light box, okay, is all painted black. There's your brass F235 laser cut hole, okay? So, this all goes back together. All right, you slide the back in. Right after you've loaded your film, right? And then you put the top back on. Okay. And you can't worry about reversing it because this is your take-up spool winder there. That's the bolt that keeps it together. And that's your pin that goes into the fresh roll of film. Okay. And you're all set, ready to photograph. Now, let's talk about pinhole cameras through history for just a little bit. Aristotle wrote about the benefits of a pinhole, how a pinhole, he saw images on a, on a wall that the, the light came through this pinhole. And he said, it's just incredible the way that uh, just a simple pinhole and I can see the images upside down, but I can see the images from outside. That was in 400 BC. They were already talking about pinholes. Da Vinci wrote about pinholes. In 1500s, he made notes that images passing through a small hole into a very dark room. And you'll see on a piece of paper all those objects outside in their natural shape and color. Also, in the 1600s, an artist, maybe you've heard of Vermeer. Vermeer made beautiful paintings using a pinhole, the, the camera obscura. He built a wooden box, a dark room, that he would go into, close the doors, and through a pinhole, he would have his subject outside, the light would go through the pinhole, and onto his canvas would be the image. And basically, he traced the person's image, and his photographs are world known. They're in the finest museums. That's the benefits of the pinhole, okay? Like I said, the most important part of the camera is the laser cut a hole into the brass that's the most critical thing for to try and get the sharpest images possible okay uh so i used the voigtlander this week this is the voigtlander vc model 2 light meter okay i would take the meter reading find it on the dials transfer it onto here in this case it was uh, F11 at 1 250th of a second. 
So I would just find that on here, line up these two dials for what the light meter said using the ISO film, right? You, you adjust, you put that in here, the ISO that you're using, and you just line up the readings. And for example, I used F11 at 1 250th of a second. Then you find your corresponding f-stop for your particular pinhole camera. In this case, f-235. So you go to f-235 and you see how long your exposure should be. In this case, it would, generally, it was two seconds. So you just, right? You just open up your camera let, uh, aperture for two seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand. Done. That's the exposure, and you advance your film. You advance your film to the next number shows up in the window. Simple, simple, simple. <coughs> uh, sometimes I use this this short little uh, eye footage tripod. Sometimes I use a regular six foot tripod, depending on what I was shooting. Okay. Uh, I developed the film, the HP5 and the Shanghai GP3 in D76, one plus three. Now this camera, where did I get mine from? BlueMoonCamera.com is where I got mine from. Great bunch of people. Um, they're an authorized distributor of zero image cameras. Okay. Uh, they, blue, uh, sorry, zero image produces a full array of different types of pinhole cameras, okay? They have back to basics with no brass fancy, just wooden dials, no brass edging. Uh, they don't give you uh, this shutter release mechanism. It's just a simple shutter. With, you use your finger, okay? They range from around 135 for a basic, a six by six, that you can't adjust the format, right? That's like 135. And Zero Image makes a $509 pinhole camera that takes 8x10 sheet film, okay? Uh, the exposure dial, like I said in the back, once you line it up, dead accurate. Dead on accurate uh, when, when you find your f-stop and you see the corresponding exposure. Now, my exposures... It was pretty very bright day, right? So I really didn't have to use uh, the compensation, right, for the film because uh, I just stuck to what the uh, dial said in the back and you'll see how well the exposures came out, okay? Um, also, Zero Image, the company that made this, they sell a 35 millimeter pinhole camera. This one, right, is 120, but they smell, sell one. It's just a little tiny thing. It's for 35 millimeter film. Uh, what a great little pinhole camera. It fits in your pocket. That's how small it is. Okay. Uh, now, improvements. What improvements would I tell Zero Image to do on the cameras, having used it now? Okay. First, I feel that this brass wind dial right to advance the film uh could be bigger it should be it should be the whole size of the biggest one that can fit on here because you're moving a lot of film a long way okay and it's pretty tight against the back the back keeps it nice and flat right and you're, you're moving a lot of film okay so one improvement would be have a larger dial or have a flip out one a flip out arm that you can do and then flip it back but that needs to be improved also uh, as you get older right the exposure scale on the back there's a lot of information there's a lot of numbers here as you get older it's harder to see so i did have to use a loop to read it to get it accurate all right but maybe a bigger one or keep this one on here and sell a bigger one right sell a bigger one uh that you could keep in your hand i like the fact that it's brass and that they're engraved on there you know uh, a paper one might get all messed up if it starts to get a little rainy out okay uh 
So this is it. This is the Zero Image Pinhole Camera, um, medium format. I shot this uh, on the 6x6 six six size. The next time I take it out, it'll be all the way at 6x9, I guess. Okay, I'm very happy with the, uh, the output, and you're going to see the images right now. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy the images to follow. I'll see you on Photo Class 73.